Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. Today, we want to take some time to discuss some technology innovation within the VTT space. AI has influenced many industries, and tabletop role-playing games are no exception. So today we wanted to take a look at three different modules for Foundry Virtual Tabletop that leverage AI, specifically the ChatGPT models, and a fourth web-based application that then interfaces with a Foundry module. This is not going to be a full tutorial on any of these applications, more just an overview to give you an idea of what AI is being used for within the space. We're not here to say that AI is this magical panacea for all of your DM woes, nor are we here to say that AI is an abomination and is going to completely replace you at the table. Everything has shades of gray, and we want to take a look at some of the AI that is in the space now, look at what it does for you, what its limitations are, and start a conversation around AI in the tabletop role-playing space and its future. So with all that said, let's dive right in. The first module that we're going to take a look at is the AI Description Generator by Pepe JN or Pepin. And you're going to notice kind of a common theme here. You don't have to pay to use this module. However, you do need a paid account with OpenAI.com. That's the website that manages ChatGPT. And you're going to have to have a paid account because this is going to use your API key to process all of the different inquiries. And on average, it's going to cost you two tenths of a cent or one penny for every five inquiries. US dollars here. And this works using chat commands and also buttons to generate descriptions for you. And Jones going to work best with popular systems in terms of knowing monsters and things, but it can work for a lot of different pieces. As a demonstration, we're going to use some of the buttons here and take a look at the descriptions. Now, in addition to the buttons, you can also use some text prompts here. You're just going to use slash GPT construct and then describe what you want a description of. And similarly to the buttons, you can use this for actors, items, attacks, and also place descriptions if you want something general there. Personally, as a GM, I get a ton of joy out of crafting the descriptions for all of these different aspects myself, so this module isn't quite for me. However, if you are someone who wants to accelerate your ability to create a lot of different descriptions or you want a lot of things on hand, then this could be fantastic for you. Some of these things are not perfectly written or are perfect for each situation. For example, the Acolyte description is a little bit more of some kind of tentacled monster rather than a humanoid in cleric robes or something like that. So you are going to have to do a little bit of editing compared to something like Describe or a similar service or module that has a lot of more cohesive curated descriptions ready for you. So if you decide to use this, keep that in mind. So let us know what you think about this. Would you be interested in using something like this? Would you prefer to use a system like Describe? Or are you more interested in crafting these types of descriptions on your own? Our next module is Ask GPT. Similar to our first module, you are going to need to have an open AI key and you'll use that API key in order to actually process these inquiries. Ask GPT is Pretty self-explanatory, you're going to ask ChatGPT about different things for your game. There are some presets for common rule systems such as 5e, and when you send it chat commands, you're going to be able to get answers to different questions and help you with some DMing on the fly. So here it's just slash question mark, and then you ask ChatGPT whatever question that you want. For example, if you need clarification on a ruling, either because you don't remember off the top of your head and don't want to look through the books, or it's a slightly more complicated issue, then it will go ahead and look for that for you. You can also ask it more general world building questions, such as general items in stores, or ask it to generate tables for you. Some things to keep in mind with this is that there is a processing time, particularly the more complex of a question you ask, but depending on what it is, it might still save you some time compared to digging through those books or looking through a bunch of different discussions online to formulate opinion on a ruling. Speaking of ruling, if you are using this for ruling advice, you may want to tell your group, hey, this is how we're going to adjudicate it tonight, but I need to do more research and formulate a more concrete opinion after this, and I'll let you know how we're going to handle it in the future. 
just because this is going to take kind of a conglomeration of different threads online or different rule sources and then give you an answer, it might not necessarily be the one that is the most cohesive with your DMing philosophy. I could see this being a very useful tool, especially if in the future you can train it a little more on your particular style of gameplay. But let us know what your thoughts are. Our final module here is my personal favorite out of this collection, and it's called Place GPT. Once again, you'll want to have an open AI key, and you'll have to have that hooked up to a paid account. And from there, you'll be able to use a button within Foundry in order to then generate descriptions of places and locations for your game. And you can have that sent to either a journal entry or a chat entry or both. There is a demo available where you can use a code, but please only do this if you're going to actually just demo this and test it, as it is going to charge the author. What's really great about this is, although it takes a couple seconds for it to generate things, particularly larger buildings, if you ask for something like that, is that in the journal entries, it's going to give you descriptions of every room in there and how they all connect to each other. So this is super helpful for getting an idea of a space. In terms of limitations, these descriptions are generally pretty generic, which makes sense. You don't want to have really specific accoutrement or decor described here that would perhaps limit these descriptions from working for a variety of settings. But then you'd need to kind of adjust that for yourself if you want specific theming. And perhaps most importantly is that there's no specific measurements on sizes of these spaces, just kind of general broad things, which is perfectly great if you're describing theater of mind situations where you're not sure you'll have to have combat or anything like that. But if things do get into combat, you are either going to have to make up these distances for yourself or switch to maybe more of a close, middle, and far distance for adjudicating your combat and running that. Where I think this is the most exciting is taking this into Dungeon Draft as a kind of map-making prompt. You already know all the rooms you're going to do and you get a general description of everything, but it's up to you on exactly how you want to design this or how you want to flavor it. So for example, I'm taking this small rural temple prompt that I got and describes kind of a central room that has an altar with candles on it, and then it has a prayer room to the side and a storage area on the other side. Using that prompt, I can base most of this map off of the prompt and get a pretty good starting base for a map, and then I can go and decide what kind of theme I want. I want this to have blue decor. I'm going to change the prayer room to instead of having only a few candles and a bunch of incense smells to being a ton of candles in there. And I'm going to have the seating in the main area rather than in the prayer room. And maybe instead of just having a bunch of shelves with things on it, I'm going to have crates and barrels and a wardrobe in the storage area. So this gives you a lot to start with when it comes to creating a map. And I think this is where this module really shines is giving you a map making prompt that you can then take into your map making software of choice, create the location, and then come back. So it's a really helpful prep tool to me. All of that said, if you're not running a lot of theater of the mind scenes, or you do want them to have specific measurements, and you're not someone who likes to make your own maps, then this might not be the most useful tool for you. Where I could see this really shining in the future is having some kind of integration with other art pieces so that it can create the map for you in addition to describing it. It would particularly be useful if it allowed you some extra flexibility where you could describe more theming and perhaps have a little bit more input other than just the general descriptive name for the location. But this one's pretty interesting to me and I'll definitely be leveraging this myself for some ideas when it comes to creating maps and our assets. The final tool that we're going to cover is this AI-powered D&D 5e monster stat block generator. Obviously, this is only for 5e, but I have to imagine that there will be similar tools for other systems in the near future. And how this works is you're just going to put in a name. You can see I already created an untitled goose at one point. And you can name this anything that you want. And then you have a type for kind of whether you want this defensive or offensive, in the middle, or random. I personally like random a lot. Then you specify the challenge rating for 5e and put in the description. You can have this be flavorful or you can add anything specific. For example, if you use a proper noun for the monster name, you may want to specify the size category and the species or geniality of the creature if that's important to you here. 
So for example, on my pirate, I want to have a swim speed. So I'm gonna specify that here, but you don't have to fill this out with anything if you don't want. It's pretty good in terms of just going off of the name. You can also choose if this is a spellcaster or not. It's gonna take quite a bit to generate a stat block. I sped this up significantly, but just be patient and it'll come through. And you can see you have a whole stat block right here, and you can use this as is, as a little reference. And for example, you've got your savage attacks feature, your multi-attack, all of these different bells and whistles that you would expect. Once you have created your stat block, you have a few different options on things to do with it. The first is you can use the home brewery, if you're familiar with that, to create a nice PDF of the stat block. You can import it to the improved initiative app. And finally, you can do what we're going to do and import it into Foundry using the D&D 5e stat block importer. So this is a pretty simple module. You just click a button to import the stat block and you paste this data in and it will generate an actor for you based off of that stat block. So here it's just this simple button down at the bottom and you paste in and select import. You can specify a folder if you would like and that's where it will populate the actor. When everything looks good, simply select import and it will open up when it's done and you can review it. As you can see, we have this really nice stat block for an orcish pirate. It's themed, he's got a cutlass rather than an ax or a regular sword. There's a few things to double check though. For example, the armor class says 17. Our original stat block specified it was 18. So you may want to double check exactly how it calculates these things as sometimes the different pieces will make assumptions or will apply numbers to things based upon a challenge rating score rather than based upon how things are calculated normally. For example, here's my untitled goose that I made earlier. I assigned this artwork, it did not come in that way. But some of the things are, for example, on spellcasting, it's got a spell save DC of 17 as a charisma caster, and it has a ninth level spell slot, a power word stun, which is actually an eighth level spell. So there's a couple things wrong there, and you can see a legendary resistance runs on into the ninth level spell slot. So there's a few things that you would want to double check. For example, this doesn't actually have the legendary resistances specified, so you would need to edit that. And again, in spellcasting, it's a level 20 character, so it's got a proficiency bonus of plus 9, so 9 plus 8 is 17, so that's the base, and that's, I think, where they came up with the DC for. But then you add the charisma, so it would be a DC of 20. And then obviously Power Word Stun is an 8th level spell, not a ninth level spell, and considering this has a pretty flavorful spell list of just things that mess with the mind or crowd control, I prefer giving it Power Word Stun over giving it Power Word Kill. So it's got a ninth level slot, but not a ninth level spell. So these are just things to keep in mind if you use this. It's really cool and flavorful with all of the different things that it does. For example, I've got things named after honks and like wing flaps. So it's very flavorful to what information I gave it. There's just some extra rule things that you probably wanna double check on if you're going to use this. So it's a very interesting tool regardless, and I'm sure this will improve over time. All right, that's going to conclude our quick little roundup of different modules and utilities that are utilizing AI for Foundry VTT. We think these are pretty interesting. They have some interesting implications for shortening your prep time as a DM or making some on the fly decisions as a GM during a game a little bit easier and faster for yourself. That said, we don't think these are going to replace human DMs anytime soon. There is some kind of chemistry or magic about being at a table, whether that's virtual or in person, with other humans and collaborating on storytelling, and that's something that AI can't quite replicate, at least not right now. But in the future, maybe there are AI-run games of tabletop role-playing games. If so, we're not sure what their place is. Does it make sense to move that collaborative storytelling to be only the players while having an AI do all of the GM work? Or is that something that's going to be kind of a select few cases, perhaps where someone isn't able to get a game together or you give the forever DM a break? We're not sure exactly the place of AI here. And it's a complicated issue because on top of whether or not they should replace this human element, there's also the aspect of where is the AI getting this information from? Is this stat block that it's coming up with truly a random amalgamation of 
stats and everything from different source books? Is this ruling based off of an interpretation of the rules? Or is this rehashing different bits from the internet and other opinions? Is this plagiarizing work and then just regurgitating and giving it to you? These are complicated questions, and they get even more complicated when we start bringing in artwork into the conversation, which we'll cover in a follow-up video to this. We really appreciate all of your thoughts and comments as we as a community try to figure out what AI's place is in this hobby that we love so much. Once again, this has been Zephyr with the Bay the Wiki channel. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, we also gain access to all the modular systems and scenes that we've made for Foundry VTT, including the ones featured in the background of this video. Again, this has been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching. Happy gaming and have a good one.